The Equitable Life Assurance Society presents This is Your FBI. <laughs> This is your FBI, an official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, presented as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. Before opening tonight's FBI file, let's consider the slogan, E Pluribus Unum that appears on every United States coin. It means one from many. In other words, get together, stay united. A perfect example is the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. In the Equitable Society, three and a quarter million Americans have united for security, have pooled their dollars to give each individual member far more financial security than he could achieve by his own unaided efforts. These equitable society dollars are invested for the benefit of its members and to promote the industrial and financial health of the entire country so that by serving its members, the Equitable Life Assurance Society serves America. Tonight's FBI file, The Sinister Souvenir. all of you men who are now wearing discharge buttons in your lapels, here is a message from your FBI. It's about those souvenirs you brought back home with you. The shooting kind. You know, that rifle or pistol or Tommy gun? Well, already scores and scores of these weapons have figured in serious crimes committed by other persons who got possession of them. A little later, we'll tell you how you can keep your war trophy from becoming an instrument of crime. But first, listen to the recent case of one returning vet and the crime that came out of his gear bag. Most of the fellows kissed the good old USA's terra firma the minute they got off the boat. But not PFC Joe Williams. He saved his kiss until he came up out of the subway and planted it smack on Flatbush Avenue, Brooklyn. A little while later, he planted another kiss on the cheek of his sister. Gosh, Joe. Hey. It's so wonderful you're home. Okay. You're home. Yeah, I'm home, baby. Oh, I'm so happy I don't know what to say. Well, I feel pretty good myself. Just let me look at you again. Okay. Oh, I... oh. I've got to stop this. Let's get organized. You sit right down over there and I'll go fix you something now, to eat. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Food can wait. I've got some things to show you first. You have what? Presents, souvenirs, junk like that. I've got them right here in the bag. But you must be hungry, though. Hey, you just stay put. Here, I'll take a look at this. That's for you. Oh, Joe. Perfume. Yeah, that's genuine French perfume. Don't smell bad, either. Here, take a sniff. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. Good, huh? And, and look, look, <laughs> here, here's something for Eddie. One of those fancy Heidelberg Steins. Oh, that's beautiful, Joe. By the way, where is that husband of yours? Well, he's still sleeping. I'll call him now and tell him that you're No, here. no, no, no. Don't bother. Here, look, take a look at the rest of this junk. All right. Souvenirs, souvenirs. Here, look. This here's a Nazi flag. Uh, it is? Yeah. Here's some Heine medals. Take a look at this. There's an honest-to-goodness German Luger. Oh, Ooh, that's a nasty-looking thing. Yeah, that's one of the sweetest automatics there is. I, I took it from the owner personally. How? Well, it's a long story. Hey! <laughs> hey! Oh, there's Eddie now. He's awake. Hey, where did you put Hi, me? Eddie. Huh? Oh. Hello, Joe. I was just going to call you, Eddie, and tell you that Joe was here, but I was so excited. Isn't this a wonderful surprise? Yeah. Welcome home, kid. Well, thanks, Ed, where did you put my brown suit? It's in the hall closet. Eddie, you talk to Joe for a minute now. I want to go out and fix something to eat. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, you look good, kid. Thanks. Thanks, Eddie. Uh, uh, when did you, you get here? Oh, I just got in a few minutes ago. Uh-huh. Yeah, what's all this stuff? Souvenirs, presents, junk, yeah. Oh, here's something for you, Eddie. Oh, for me? Oh, 
Stay, Marcia. Mm-hmm. Right from Heidelberg. Oh, thanks. Hey. Hey, what's with the gun? Oh, that's a uh, German Luger. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a good-looking job. Where, where'd you get it? I took it off a guy. Yeah. Uh, look, you mind if I look at it? No, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, this is okay. Uh, Joe. Yeah? Look, I don't want to sound ungrateful, but could I maybe work a swap with you? Oh, what, what do you mean? The Sluger instead of the beer mug? Oh, gee, oh I, I throw in a little cash on the side. What do you want with a gun? Oh, just for a souvenir. What do you say? I'm afraid not, Eddie. Okay, kid. Come on, let's go in and eat. Is that you, Eddie? No, it's me, sis. Joe. Well, did you visit all the neighbors? Yeah, I saw a few of them. Weren't they surprised? Mm-hmm. I purposely didn't tell any of them that you were home. I wanted them to Peg, be. Hey, I, yeah. Uh... Yeah? I gotta talk to you. What about? Eddie. Well? Now, look, Peggy, I, I know this is none of my business, and if, if he wasn't married to you, I'd keep out of it, but what does the guy do? You mean his job? Yeah. He's a salesman. What does he sell? Lots of things. Well, I mean, what? What, for instance? Well, now, why do you want to know this, Joe? Well, for one thing, I was talking to some of the guys in the neighborhood today. From what they said, Eddie's mixed up with the wrong kind of people. Oh. You knew that, didn't you? Yeah. I had another reason for asking, too. You know that Luga I brought home with me? The gun? Mm-hmm. Eddie wanted it. He said he'd swap me the beer mug for it and give me some cash besides. Yeah, but you didn't give it to no, him. No, no, but I looked in my gear bag this morning. Yeah? The Luger is gone. Yes, the Luger is gone. But it is no longer a war trophy, a souvenir. It has gone to a darkened warehouse on the Brooklyn waterfront. There, in the hands of Joe's brother-in-law and a companion, the Luger has now become an instrument of crime. How many more boxes? This is the last of them here. Okay, let's get them out of the truck. Look, we've been here long enough. Listen, we take a couple of more minutes. Come on. Okay. Easy enough. Wait a minute. Hmm? Listen. Probably the watchman. Dutch. Don't tell me. I told you we should have. Shut up. He's coming right at us. He's going to spot us. No, he ain't. Oh. Let's blow. Forrest? Yes? My name is Hope. This is Mr. Rogers. We're from the FBI. Well, well, how, how do you do? Uh, the body of the watchman is in the main warehouse. Uh, come with me, please. Surely. Any idea when the killing occurred? Not more than two hours ago. That's the last time the watchman checked in. I see. When he missed making his last report, we investigated. After finding the body, we immediately called you. Mm-hmm. Uh, in here, please. All right. Go ahead, Jack. There he is, right over there. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'll go outside and wait for the coroner. Surely, Mr. Forrest. Okay, Jack, let's have a look at him. Okay. Uh, Drilled him right through the head. Yeah. Well, we better start looking for where that bullet lodged. Now, let's see. He was standing right here at the entrance of this row of narcotic packing cases... Bullet entered low on the forehead. Came out high in the back of his head. Hey, look, Larry, high up on that post there. Where? Oh, looks like a fresh chip. Yeah. Uh, come on, give me a hand with this ladder. Okay. Hold it here. Now. That's good. All right. Now hold it steady and I'll go up. Watch it. What'd you find, Jack? What we're looking for, all right. Good. If I don't break my knife digging it out. Yeah. Yeah, that's got it. Okay, come on now. What's it look like? It's not big enough for a thirty-eight. Doesn't look like a thirty-two either. No. Oh. Well, let's not bother guessing. Let's see what other leads we can pick up and then get over to the lab. Come in. 
come in. Somebody here to see Eddie. Who is it? He says he's your brother-in-law. What's he doing here? Tell him I'm busy. Now you can't be that busy, Eddie. Okay, kid, come on in. Wait outside, don't you? Okay. What's on your mind? Well, uh, Peg asked me to come here to your office. She was worried when you didn't come home last night. I was working. All night? Yeah, all night. Doing what, Eddie? What's that to you? Well, it's nothing to me, but well, Peg's my sister. Now let her ask the question. Look, Eddie, I talked to some guys in the neighborhood and they told me some things about you that didn't sound so good. Oh, yeah? Like what? Well, that you were mixed up with the wrong kind of guys. What is this? Are you trying to pin something on me? No, I just want to find out if it's true. Of course it ain't true. Someone's trying to knife me, that's all. And there's one more thing. Well? That uh, German Luger I brought home with me. What about it? You wanted it. That's right. I looked for it yesterday. It was gone. Now, wait a minute. Are you trying to say I took that gun? Eddie, all I know is it's gone. Have you told all this to Peg? Yes. Oh, that's great. That puts me in a terrible spot. Now, look, could you go on home? Tell Peg I'll be home for dinner. Then the three of us can sit down and straighten this out. Okay? Any lab report on that bullet check yet, Larry? No, but they had to call any minute. Looks like that's going to be our best clue. Why, Jack? What about those fingerprints we got off the windowsill when the thieves came in? They were the night watchmen's. Well, that's that. Targeted. Hope speaking. Oh, it's the lab. Oh. Yes. Yes, all right. Uh-huh. I'll send over the complete report, will you, please? Thanks. What's the verdict, Larry? Caliber of that bullet was 7.65. Millimeters. That's right. It was fired from a German Luger. Peg. Peg. She isn't here, Eddie. Huh? Oh. Hi, kid. I say Peg went out. Well, didn't you tell her I was coming home for supper? Yeah, yeah, I told her. Where'd she go? See the doctor? Doc? What for? Well, looks like you're going to become a father. How no good. Eddie, have you seen today's paper? Why? There's a story in it about a holdup in a government warehouse. Yeah? The watchman in the warehouse was killed. So what? Well, let me read you something. Yeah. The bullet which killed the watchman was found lodged in a wooden support. The FBI laboratory positively identified it as having been fired from a German Luger. What are you telling me for? When I was in your office today, I saw some boxes, Eddie. Boxes with government stencils on them. Look, who are you driving at? I know now what happened to my Luger. Now, look. You, you did that job, Eddie. You did it with my gun. You're crazy. Where's the gun? I don't know what you're talking about. Turn around. Keep away from me. Yeah, there's a bulge over your hip. I want to find there out. There we are. I was right. Yeah, wise guy. This is your gun pointing right at you. Let me have it, Eddie. What? I want that gun. Keep away, kid. I said I want that gun. Okay. Oh. So long, sucker. Tonight's FBI file on the sinister souvenir will reopen in just a moment. Meanwhile, perhaps you will be surprised as I was to learn that there is more than one kind of security. This week at the Equitable Society, I got a brand new slant on the subject of security from Thomas I. Parkinson, president of the society. Did it ever occur to you, Mr. Parkinson said to me, that there's such a thing as having too much security? Well, how could that be, I asked. Well, Mr. Parkinson said, a convict in jail serving a life sentence has perfect security. His clothes, food, and shelter are assured for the rest of his life. But who wants that kind of security bought at the price of freedom? Of course, that's an extreme case, President Parkinson went on, but don't forget that the oldest trick of all dictatorial governments, from Julius Caesar to Adolf Hitler, was to promise the people bread and circuses and security and then take away their liberties. 
Mr. Parkinson paused for a moment, and when he continued, there was a note of deep conviction in his voice as he said, That's one reason why all of us in the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States are glad that Americans believe in life insurance. Equitable society members do not pay for their security with lost freedom. Life insurance security is the result of individual thrift and forethought, of initiative and self-reliance. And a man with life insurance is pretty sure to turn a deaf ear to the glib promises of demagogues and agitators. Yes, we're proud to say that this week, and every week for 86 years, the Equitable Society has been building security, the right kind of security, for you, your home, and your country. And now, back to the FBI file on the Sinister Souvenir. Of course, no returning veteran expects that the pistol or Tommy gun or other lethal weapon which he brings home as a war trophy shall ever become an instrument of crime. Joe Williams certainly didn't expect that to happen to his German Luger automatic. But two nights after he got home, one man had been murdered with it, and next day he himself was shot with it. A few minutes after the brutal shooting of Joe Williams, his sister returned to the apartment. Finding him on the floor, she called the doctor, then worked feverishly to bring him back to consciousness. Here, darling, drink this water. Thanks. No, don't move, Joe. I'll lift your head. Okay. That's fine. That's fine, darling. I bandaged the wound and checked the bleeding. The doctor will be right over. Uh-huh. Joe, what happened? Uh, it was an accident. I shot myself. That's not true. Honest, Peg. Yeah, then where's the gun? Well, it's... Look, I've got a pretty good idea what really happened. Eddie did this to you. No, Peg. Joe, I saw him run out of the building here as I was coming down the street. I called out to him, but he just kept right on going. Now, you tell me the truth, Joe. Okay. It was Eddie. Why'd he do it? Why? He did take my gun. He used it in the holdup. He killed a man. I tried to take the gun back. He shot me with it. I'm sorry, sis. Joe... Joe, we got to call the police. No, don't. Joe, he killed a man. He's gone. He won't be back. Look, you're going to keep out of this. What about the doctor? He's going to know that something was wrong. We'll, we'll, we'll tell him it was an accident. Look, sis, you're going to have a baby. Let's do this for the kid, huh? number, Jack? Yep. Yeah? Good afternoon. We're special agents of the FBI. The FBI? Yes. We learned about your brother's accident. May we come in and talk to him? Well, uh, uh, yes, I guess so. Thank you. Go ahead, Jack. Go ahead. This way, please. Thanks. Who's the company, sis? These men are uh, special agents of the FBI, Joe. What do you want? Well, Joe, we thought you might be interested in something we found out about the bullet that the doctor dug out of your shoulder. How did you know about it? Our doctors have to report these cases to the police, you know. That's how we got hold of the bullet. Well, what about it? Well, under our microscopes in the laboratory, it exactly matches the one that killed the night watchman last night. We'd like to see your German Luger, Joe. Uh, yeah. I, I, I haven't got it. We know you didn't kill the night watchman. Uh, yeah, I say, I, I haven't got the gun. Let's see. Did your husband take it with him, Mrs. Oakland? You know. Yes. We've checked everybody in your house since we found out about the bullet. Sis didn't know the truth about Eddie. We're sure of that. You see, she wanted to spill everything right away, but I kept her from it on account of... I kind of... Yes, we even know about the baby, too. What we want to know now is where is Eddie Oakland? I wish we could tell you. We need a good description of him. The police knew him, of course, but nobody has a photo of him. I can furnish that. Oh, good. Jack. Yeah? I'll stay here and get a full interview on everything. You go back to the office, get out an alarm on Oakland. I'll meet you there. Right. I 
How you doing, Jack? No results from the alarm yet. How did you make out? Very well. What did you get? Oakland's wife told me about an office he had. I went over to the place, found some of the goods stolen from the warehouse. Well. I also found a man there. I've had him booked as a suspect. Could he tell you where Oakland was? No, but he's being questioned now. I've put out an alarm on his car. Oh, you'll probably stay out of that. It's too hot. I'll get it. Hope speaking. Oh, hello, Howard. What? Yes, yes, wonderful. Good work. We'll get on at Pronto. Thanks. Got something? Oakland's on the Commodore, headed for Chicago. Really? At least Howard turned up a ticket seller who sold Oakland space on it. Which section? A second. Let's see. It's midnight now. Train hasn't gotten to Buffalo yet. Let's get the Buffalo office on the phone. <laughs> Anything else, Joe? No, thanks. But you didn't eat a thing. I wasn't hungry. Now, you know the doctor said you've got to eat. I know, I know what the doctor said. Look, sis, I'm getting out of bed tomorrow. Joe. I don't want you waiting on me like now, this. Joe, I'll I don't... caused you enough trouble. What are you talking about? Well, if I hadn't brought that stinking gun into this house... That gun's got no bearing on what Eddie did. Well, it was my pistol that killed that watchman. Eddie killed the watchman. Oh, if I could only get my hands on him, I'd... do what, Peg? Peg? Tell me, what would you do? Why, you dirty... Take it easy. Eddie, why did Shut you... up and listen. I come back here for a couple of days until the heat cools off, then I'll be on my way again. No, you can't stay here. Well, this is the safest place for me to be. I'm supposed to be on my way to Chicago. Can I help it if I'm smart? You're so smart, you've got the whole FBI looking for you. That's why I come back. The FBI will never think of looking for me here until after I'm gone. That is, uh... Unless one of you tries to tell him something. In which case, there's plenty of bullets left in this Luca. Tell him where he can go, sis. Six me something to eat, Peg, and some hot jam. I said tell him where Shut he up can go. Shut up, girl, before I... Daddy, don't. I'll get you something to eat. Swell. Oh, and look. Nobody's leaving this house until after I do. Understand? <laughs> Larry, the Commodore left Buffalo 30 minutes ago. We ought to hear something. Well, maybe it was late. Maybe so, but... Oh, yeah. Hobbs speaking. Yes. Oh, it's Buffalo now. Good. Hello, yes. What? Uh-huh. Yeah, I see. Pull the old gag, huh? Well, thanks anyway. So long. What happened? The man riding in Oakland space wasn't Oakland. Pulled the old trick, book space, then turned it over to a hotel porter to sell to somebody else. Oakland's trying to be foxy, huh? Well, Jack, there's another part that usually goes with that particular piece of foxiness. What do you mean? Come on. I believe I'll get to show you what I mean. Good. I hope it chokes you. Thanks. Any more jabber there, Peg? Yeah. Pour me some. Let him pour his own. I didn't do a very good job on you, did I? Just swinging you in the shoulder. Maybe I can make up for it before I leave. What do you mean by that? Just trying to make him behave himself, that's all. That gun makes you a real big guy. I'm a big guy without it. Yeah, as long as I'm in bed, you are. Peg, will you tell us... Where did she go? Well, uh, you wanted more coffee, didn't you? She had coffee right here. Well, maybe she went to make some fresh. Maybe she went to do something else, too, like getting on that phone. Leave her alone. Oh, no. Peg, what are you doing? Operator, hurry, please. Get away from that phone. Hang up, I said. <coughs> Told you not to do that. <coughs> get back in there. Take your hands off her. Joe, get back to bed. I'm going to fix this guy right now. Look, kid, I don't want to blast you again. Keep away, I'm warning you. Eddie, don't. Drop that gun, Oakland, and huh? don't turn around. Yes, yeah. Ah, you see what I meant, Jack? If he was dumb enough to pull the old railroad gag, then he had to pull the rest of the act, too. Try to hide out at home. All right, Oakland. Come on. Eddie Oakland and his accomplice were tried for the murder of the warehouse watchman. They were convicted on the charge of first-degree murder. 
As for Joe Williams, his war trophy, the German Luger, was returned to him. But after it had been rendered harmless by experts of the FBI. And that brings us to the final part of your FBI's message to you returned veterans who have brought back firearm souvenirs from the battlefield. No one wants you to give them up. You earned the right to keep them. Earned it the hard way. But please, for your sake, for the sake of your loved ones, and for the sake of society, have a firearms expert render your gun harmless. Do this now. Do it now without delay, and you can be certain that your souvenir will always remain just that and never become an instrument of a crime. Next week, you will hear another thrilling case from the files of the FBI. Before telling you about it, here's a brief but important message from the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. To the FBI, America looks for national security. And to the Equitable Society, three and a quarter million Americans look for the financial security of life insurance. These three and a quarter million people comprise the Equitable Society. Because, you see, the moment they purchased life insurance through an Equitable Society representative, they became members of this great mutual organization. Remember, like your FBI, the Equitable Life Assurance Society representative in your community is constantly working for the security of you, your home, and your country. Next week, we will bring you another colorful story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, The Cautious Killer. The incident used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are taken from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious, and any similarity thereof to the names of persons living or dead is accidental. Tonight, the music was under the direction of Frederick Steiner, the author was Frank Ferries, and your narrator was Dean Carlton. This is your FBI, is a Jerry Devine production. Now, this is Carl Frank... Speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community and inviting you to tune in again next week at this same time for This is Your FBI. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.